Hi, welcome to She Tales, where everything on this channel is alleged and for entertainment purposes only. Now let's get into it. Sinead O'Connor was an Irish singer and songwriter. She was a pop singer with an angelic voice and a shaved head that made her stand out from the rest of the pop artists and her counterpart, Madonna. Sinead rose to fame worldwide after her cover of Prince's song, Nothing Compares to You, a song I loved growing up. She had numerous hits that led her to win Grammys. She would go on to sabotage her career with her antics and protests. Sinead threatened to walk out of a concert if the Star Spangled Banner was played beforehand. The national anthem was not played, but Sinead was banned from future performances at the Garden States Arts Center. If you're going to have a concert in my country, you're going to play the national anthem before and after. If you don't like America, get the hell out. My opinion is she should go back to Ireland or wherever the hell she is from. And you will hear no Sinead O'Connor on this radio station. Even Frank Sinatra took a shot at Sinead, declaring he wanted to, quote, kick her in the ass. On October 3rd, 1992, she appeared on Saturday Night Live to sing a rendition of Bob Marley's song, War which she attended as a protest against abuse in the Catholic Church. She changed the lyrics in the song from racism to abuse. She then showed a photo of the Pope John Paul to the camera while singing the words evil, after which she tore the photo into pieces. The nation saw this and was outraged. There were protests against her and her music. People gather in the streets to smash, steamroll, and crip walk on her CD. The reaction was swift. She had ignited a media firestorm. Sinead O'Connor tore up a picture of the Pope. O'Connor outraged Catholics and lots of other people across the country. Until she apologizes, we've got to say, do not buy her material. After all the controversies, her career would never recover. She announced her retirement in 1992 after being booed at a Bob Dylan concert. She went on to become a priest and a mom of four. Today she have come out of retirement and is writing music and touring. Jaleel White, aka Steve Urkel, rose to fame in the late 80s after appearing on an episode of Family Matters. The producer and the audience loved him, and also the ratings was high for that episode. Shortly after, the producers decided to permanently write his character into the show. Judy went upstairs, y'all, and never came back down, and the rest was history. Urkel was the most popular and known television character in the late 80s through the mid-90s. He played multiple characters on the show, such as Stefan, his cousin Myrtle, and Urkel. He was the annoying neighbor who got under Carl Winslow's skin and was obsessively in love with his daughter Laura. Urkel's character was so popular, people everywhere were saying his catchphrases. Did I do that? Can I do that? And he also had his own merchandise and dolls. By the late 90s, the show ratings were starting to decline. The show was canceled after eight seasons. Jalil would try to find work in Hollywood. He would get work here and there, but because he was typecast as the nerdy teen Steve Urkel, production companies wouldn't take him seriously. He would always be Urkel in their eyes. Jalil would later go on to say, he hated the character Urkel and would be annoyed when people would refer to him as Urkel. Now Jalil is still working here and there, is a father, and decided to put the name he once hated, Urkel, to use by starting his own marijuana brand called Purple Urkel. Robert Matthew Van Winkle, aka Vanilla Ice, was born in Dallas, Texas. He claimed to have grown up in the trenches in the ghettos of Florida. He grew up battling in rap battles, and that's how he got his name Vanilla Ice. He claimed because he was a cold white boy. He also hung out in African American dance clubs. That's where he learned his dance moves. After impressing MC Hammer with his dance moves and rapping, he was invited to open for him on the road. He had a song called play that funky music, 
which didn't make any noise. So Vanilla Ice one day asked the DJ to flip the record on the other side, the beat to Ice Ice Baby played, and he rapped over it and the rest was history. Vanilla Ice had pandemonium right out the box with their single Ice Ice Baby. Ice Ice Baby would become the number one song in America, knocking MC Hammer Please Don't Hurt Him album out the 21 week number one spot. He became an international star and also dated Madonna for eight months. With his popularity, his team took full advantage, putting him in TV shows, movies, and having his own merchandise. Van Winkle became very overexposed. He actually was mad because his team was marketing him to young white suburban kids and he wanted to be taken serious as a hardcore rapper. After his management team put his bio out, fans and the public start to become suspicious of his background. Fans begin to turn their backs on him. His Vanilla Ice is a phony who I see on MTV who made up his background and was uh, angry when he got caught. Now there's a big controversy about your bio. Could you tell the people out here exactly where you're from? I'm from the streets, man. If it were for rap, I'd probably be in jail or dead. Word to your mother. <laughs> his career began to sputter when his ghetto past was revealed to be a sham. He hasn't grown up in Miami dodging switchblades in the hood. In fact, he grew up in White Bread Carlton, break dancing in the malls. More trouble would follow Ice as he was sued by different artists for ripping them off and sampling. He started his own movie called Cold Ass Ice, which was corny and flopped. Yeah, we'll see about that. Oh yeah, cat. words of wisdom. Drop that zero and give it the hero. <laughs> Excuse me? And his biggest problems was yet to come. Van Winkle claimed Suge and his hood booger goons was in his hotel one evening waiting on him when he got there. He claimed Suge and his goons drug him to the balcony and told him he would sign over royalty rights to an artist that claimed to have written the hit Ice Ice Baby. Suge would later go on to say none of that was true and Winkle just simply signed it and they left. Vanilla Ice now lives in Florida had three daughters, and is a professional home flipper. He is now partnered with Brand Star Studios to launch the Vanilla Ice Home Show, The Real Deal Has Learned. If you like this video, leave a comment, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.